SSL. But HTTPS is the part in front of your uh, domain name. So that's why I call it HTTPS. Something about myself, I'm a senior Windows system engineer at a uh, company who develop their own software internationally. So we have 17 offices worldwide and I uh, maintain all the uh, hosting servers. It's all on Windows based because the software has all .NET. So, uh, and I do all the security parts uh, for firewalling, server refresh proxy, website communication, things like that. Um, in the Joomla community, I'm one of the regional coordinators for the XM part at the certification program, uh, just for the user groups in, uh, in the Netherlands, because we have that many user groups, about 15 or 17 user groups, uh, and we have an original coordinator for the uh, Joomla learning partners, just because we know all the people in, in the Netherlands and it's much easier for the operation team to have some local presence. Uh, next to my job and my volunteering work, I have my own company, just as a hobby, helping uh, other web developers on Joomla base and mostly on the technical part, server part and securing uh, things. And if I have time, I translate some extension into Dutch. So, and I help organizing you know, many different Joomla events, uh, mostly in, in Holland, but some in the other parts of the world. So. But we are here for HPS. Um, I'm going to t tell you something about the basic principles to get to the HPS part, right? the technical part on how, how does it work in the basics. Uh, and of course the most important part, uh, how do we get your SSL certificate, what do you need to do to maintain it and things like that. And some things to know from the past and for, for the future. And of course important Juma, because we're all here about Juma. So within the principles I will discuss the definitions, what it is, how it works. And uh, if I go too deep in the technical part, just say, but that's, that's the risk of <laughs> working too much with those things. <laughs> so, the definitions. Many people heard about the DNS. It's a domain name system, and I always compare it with the phone book. You search for a name, you found, uh, found a number, a number, you call it, and it's working the same on the internet. You type a name, it goes to an IP address, and you get your information. Um, TLS and SSL are the names for the uh, protocol, so the, the technical part of, of your HPS communication. Uh, most people know SSL, but it's the old way. You don't want to use SSL anymore for many years already. That's why technically we use TLS only, yeah, everybody knows SSL, so we always talk about SSL. Um, CA, Certi certificate Authority, um, one of the highest uh, companies who can sell you the certificates and you have certain companies who can of course sell you the certificates too, but they use the Certificate Authority to get their certificates. So there's always uh, the highest part. And uh, domain name, many people think that the domain name is, is uh, Joomla.org. But the real part of the domain name is the Joomla and the .org is the TOD. So it's, it's the, the, for example, the letter code and all those things that nowadays you have a shop and things like that. And of course you can have a subdomain. So you can have xm.joomla.org. Oh, sorry, just one question. Can you shortly explain why TLS is more safe than SSL? SSL is uh, created around 1986, okay. and you had version 1, version 2, version 3, and version 3 is from 1996, uh, so it's very old. Uh, meanwhile, they created a new version of SSL, that only they called it TLS, and nowadays we're already three versions away, so 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2 is already existing. 
and they are creating 1.3. So it's just new techni uh, technical changes, better protection, uh, fixes and things like that. So it's, it's very, very old, so if you use SSL uh, version 3, uh, the latest SSL uh, uh, part, you can really say you will be hacked. <laughs> it's, it's really not safe anymore. And that's all the information you get with, with the names as Poodle and Heartbleed Attack and all those kind of news information. It's all about those old kind of protocols. So, what is it? Like I said, there are, those are protocols, but those are cryptographic protocols. So, uh, there are protocols to encrypt information. There are many different parts within those uh, main protocols. Which, call we, uh, which we call cyber suites, but those protocols just will, uh, are used to secure the communication uh, between the supplier and the client. So between the one on the, uh, after be, uh, behind the laptop uh, opening the website and the server. But it's not only used for, for websites, it's even used for web services, as mobile apps, and all kinds of things. So, what are certificates? Simply said, it's just a text file, nothing more. If you have a certificate, you can open it in, in a notepad, in a text editor, only the information you see is not readable for human eyes. It's all numbers and mixed up codes and things like that. <coughs> um, in the browsers you have uh, the certificate authority public root certificates, uh, the main certificates pre-installed in your, in your browser. Uh, like GeoTrust, uh, Komodo, and even Let's Encrypt. And uh, you need those um, already installed because you can uh, you can buy your certificate yourself. You can do it at the root suppliers, you can do it at uh, IT partners and things like that. And they are a um, member of the root certificate. So if you only you have your own certificate and you ha don't have a pre-installed root certificate or you don't use the root certificate, then your uh, connection is not accepted because you have an invalid certificate. So they are the main part of the certificate uh, communication line. And it's needed to establish the secure connection. Without it, you can't get any HTTPS. So, most of you know HTTP, HTTPS, the S just stand for secure. It's still the same internet communication on only secured. So, the traffic is encrypted. And with the normal part, it's just unencrypted. All your information go plain text over the internet. So, how is it created? Um, I will have an image about uh, the number of lines and the, the parts uh, what happens. So, but essentially, you have three keys: you have a public key, you have a private key, and you have a session key. So, the private key is of course private. It's only for you. It's only on your server or your website, nowhere <laughs> else. <laughs> Put it on the internet, and you are screwed. Because then they can uh, do everything with your certificate and with your communication, and you can bet it and do HP without the secure part. So keep the private key private, nowhere else. The public key is used to send to the one who visits your website. And with the public key, they are uh, the session keys are created. But I will show you. So, it's essentially five steps. Web browser goes to the web server. He gets the certificate back with the public key. The web browser will create a session key based on, on, on the public key. So he, he sends encrypted information for just that, that session back to the server. And because the server has a private key, he can decrypt it again and if the information match, you will get your secure connection. So, 
I will put the slides online, so if you afterwards want to read the, the details. Um, while setting up the connection, of course, your certificate is checked if, if, if it's still valid, if it's not expired, if the name in the certificate is correct, and those kind of information. Because it's not only the keys for the encryption who needs to be correct, it's even the certificate. But without a valid certificate, you can't use the keys to encrypt any information. So, there are dependencies. If you check your um, certificate after uh, requesting one, you will see the, the CN, the common name. And in the common name you will find or your domain name or a wildcard domain name with a star. And that's one of the parts what uh, tells the other system that the certific certificate is just for, for you. So, for example, if you have xm.joomla.org, you can buy a certificate xm.joomla.org, it's only for that website. But you can buy a wildcard and you can use it for the XM website, but even for the certification and for the training and for all the kinds of websites you have ending on Joomla.org. So, any questions until the post more the technical information? Um, Obtaining an SSL certificate. We have um, three main certificates. Domain name certificate, so uh, just Joomla.org. Uh, we have so kind of some um, uh, multi-domain, so you can uh, request a certificate with Joomla.org, but uh, Joomla.de and OU in, in one certificate, so you can put many, many different domains in one certificate. So you can use one certificate on different websites. And uh, like I said, you have the wildcards. And within those different certificates, you even have different kinds of validation methods. Uh, the most simple one is, is just domain validation. So the, the supplier who delivers the certificate only checks your domain name. If it's re registered, it's on your name in the WIRS database. And it's the most uh, vested. Um, it takes less time to get that one. Um, you have an organization validation. Uh, then the supplier will even check your organization, for example, at the Chamber of Commerce, uh, or your registered, uh, registered company, and information like that. And you have an extended validation uh, one, uh, which is mostly used by, by banks, and then you will get the green bar. Sometimes you've seen green bar in Google uh, with, secure, with the name of the company in it. And that one will take uh, many, many time. Um, but to get a SSL certificate, you need some things. Um, most of the current hosting providers use, use, uh, still use a, a unique IP address, so you have to pay extra to be able to use an SSL certificate. Um, but oh, for many years we have server name indication functionalities. And that uh, just means they can run multiple websites on one IP address and still use uh, different certificates or for the different websites. Um, so I'm not sure if the biggest one is SiteGround. Uh, wants you to buy an unique IP address, but in Holland we have one big hosting provider that buy it. It's one of the greatest uh, hosting providers, but they still want you to buy a unique IP address, so it's not easy to use uh, HPS. I think SiteGround in the meantime, they uh, have deployed Let's Encrypt, yeah. um, and so I assume they're using SNI now too, because offering free certificates, but having individual IPs per user doesn't really make sense from a business perspective. Yeah. IPs are too exactly. expensive for this. Now, like I said, for the domain validation and, and the other kind of certificates, you need to have the correct information in the US database uh, where the domain names uh, are registered. In Holland, we have the uh, SIDN, 
who is the owner of the .nl domain name. So there the information is registered about, about the, who, the one who bought the domain as to who is the automator. So in every country it will be another uh, organization. But that, those, uh, that information will be checked. And of course, what I said with the extended validations, you they will check your business and organization documents, check your um, Now, how do you get some certificates? Where can you buy them? Uh, there are many different methods. You can do, of course, do it yourself. Uh, generate uh, so-called signing request. Send it to a supplier. Uh, follow all their steps, and you will get your certificate. Uh, of course, you can ask an IT partner, like your host and provider to help you, things like that. Um, or your hosting provider, like SiteGround, has Let's Encrypt. And you can do it yourself, just in three or four clicks. Um, these are the main root suppliers. So th these, these are the ones where you have your uh, CA root certificate if pre-installed in your uh, browser. And nowadays, uh, Let's Encrypt root certificates are all installed in the browsers, uh, mostly on the new uh, OS platforms. So I'm not sure if they, they updated, uh, for example, Windows XP, but it's just that old. So I would imagine if you're still using Windows XP, you're screwed, uh, screwed anyway. Yeah, so you should be getting used to not seeing <laughs> stuff. Exactly. So. Um, how much time will it take? So, like I said, domain, domain validation certificates only take a few minutes. Uh, if you use a supplier, of course, it would take many more minutes than using Let's Encrypt. And let's encrypt is, is entering two fields and submit a request and wait a minute. And you have your certificate and yeah, with supply it can, it can take you 10 to 15 minutes, but still not much. Uh, the organization validations can take hours, but even days, depending on the supplier. And the extent validation can even take a few weeks. But that's why it's, uh, most of the organizations who use them are the banks. So, nowadays I use the hosting control panels to implement uh, a certificate mm -hmm. because you can use indeed the Let's Encrypt method. Um, if you use your hosting provider or your IT partner, you still have to do maintenance. So, uh, a certificate has a validation period depending on what kind of validation period you have chosen while well, buying a certificate can be one year but even can be three years uh, but often before the time expires you need to renew your certificate buy a new one implement a new one and re replace or upgrade and with upgrade i mean if the uh, the past we used uh, sha1 an old encryption method nowadays we use version 2 but if you use the old one, you needed to upgrade as your certificate to get more security again. Uh, but when you use Let's Encrypt, the renewal goes automatically. So the certificates in Let's Encrypt uh, are nowadays three months uh, valid. But before the three months ends, the server will, will renew your certificate and will place a new one. And so it will do the renewal for yourself. And if in the future the, the, uh, the basic encryptions uh, will, the standards will be get higher, then yeah, maybe you have to request a new one. But even the Let's Encrypt is just a few clicks and you can uh, request a new version. So, like I said, SHA1 is outdated. Um, if a website uses it, the browser will tell you. The, the browser will display warnings, and it's if if you still trust the website, okay, use the website. But every website you, which is using this old encryption, 
I will not think, uh, go to and not uh, use any options and uh, any services from that website because it's really, really old. Mm -hmm. They talked about three, four years ago from the Internet Consortium where members like Microsoft and, and Facebook and Google are a member of that they will uh, discontinue this version that they already told four years ago and people are still using this encryption method. Um, this is something new. So, if you use HTTPS, uh, your hosting provider or yourself, depending on the capabilities of the server to HTTPS access, you can enable uh, ASTS and it's just a uh, helping feature to tell the browser that everything on your website must be used with HTTPS. Mm -hmm. And if it's not used, then you will get warnings. Mm. HTTP-2. Um, most people don't know, if you go to on the internet and you browse websites, you use the 1.1 communication protocol for, for the HTTP protocol. It, it, even doesn't matter if it's HTTP or HTTPS, you use version 1.1. Nowadays there is a 2.0 version, a new one. Uh, most people call it the new internet because it's much faster and uh, has other uh, new features. And now at this moment, and maybe they still are going to change it, uh, it's they only accept HTTPS communication with the latest TLS version. Um, for now it's 1.2, but you never know what happens when 1.3 comes out. Um, so uh, a hosting provider can change their server configuration to enable this protocol, and then your visitors who has the capability to communicate with this new kind of, of communication line uh, will go to your website on this protocol me method and then they will see your website much faster. So nowadays if, if you finish your website, uh, visit the website, all the information is uh, you receive a file, you receive a file, uh, file after file and in the new method it's everything at once. So you are not waiting on all, all, all those HP requests for all the files you deliver to display your website. And uh, browsers like Firefox and, and Google already communicated that they are going to warn visitors if the website is, isn't secure. So now you get a warning if your uh, HTTPS configuration isn't correct. But they are going to start to warn people if the website isn't using HTTPS at all. So the, the world is really, really changing. Yeah? So normally you go to a website, doesn't matter if it's HTTP or HTTPS. If it's correctly configured, you won't get any warnings. But you will start getting warnings in a few months now. Especially with Chrome and Firefox. But I'm sure Microsoft, Opera and all the others will follow. Um, so I use Let's Encrypt. I, I go to my, uh, I use Direct Admin as uh, my control panel on the Plex or any else. So in Direct Admin, I just do a few clicks and I have my certificate installed. And in, in Direct Admin, I can say uh, just use the public HTML folder instead of the pri private HTML folder um, because. I can enable the option in Joomla to force HTTPS for the entire site. So nowadays it doesn't matter anymore if the website is stored in the private HTML or in the public HTML. Uh, on other control panels it's 18 docs at the folder where your website resides on the, on the hosting uh, location. Because of that, enabling this option is enough to force the whole website to HTTPS. So it, even if a visitor just 
enters your domain name and the first communication starts on HTTP, Joomla will redirect it and they will use the HTTPS part. Um, for some hosting providers, you still have two different folders to be able to use HTTP or HTTPS and then you need to change the HTTP uh, HTTP access configuration to redirect the people manually from HTTP to HTTPS communication. So this is this part is only necessary for hosting providers who explicit split the two parts of, of using HTTP or HTTPS. So nowadays it's just enough to change the setting. And if the server is correct configured, all the security protocols are enabled, you have a correct certificate, then you will be able to get an A plus rating on the SSL Labs website. Uh, SSLlabs.com is a website to uh, scan uh, websites, web services, uh, things like that. And they will tell you if, if your website is really secured. Not only because you are using the uh, HTTPS communication with certificate, but even if your hosting providing, provider is doing the security work they need to do. Um, I will try to show uh, the website. I'm not sure if I can move. Yeah. So. Scrolling doesn't work. So it's a bit of technical. So first of all, we will check your certificate. If you is your certificate the on the uh, good encryption level, you will see here the RSA that I used 4069. Uh, most default configurations are uh, 2048. Is still good. Everything below that, uh, it's it's getting old. Uh, so he will give you the information about your fingerprints and fidelity of your certificate, encryption methods, uh, who is the issuer, and if it's trusted, and things like that, and uh, what kind of certificates are supplied, what kind of protocols are supported. So. Like you see, SSL1, uh, one is not even checked anymore, two and three are disabled. Um, These things are called the cyber suites, so within every protocol they have different kind of suites uh, for the different kind of certificates to be able to uh, communicate, to encrypt and decrypt the information. Uh, even there, a host provider can play with. But more interesting for most of the web administrative is what kind of devices, browsers are supported within my configuration. So SSL Labs checks the different uh, Android versions, Chrome versions, Firefox, tells you which kind of protocol the system is using. And as you can see, I have changed that many security settings that everybody who visits this website with Windows XP, with Internet Explorer 6, very old of course, the server just closed connection and they say goodbye. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. But there are still many, many, especially in companies, who are using XP, XP and EA6, isn't it? No? If there are companies that are using that, yeah. <laughs> I think they just have to stop using their network. Okay. It's, it's really insecure. Okay. But not not only for, for so the part browsing, EA6 but... but EA8, I think? Yes, on, on, on Windows XP there is no secure IE version available. 
If you're using it, you're screwed. Yeah, but if you check the distribution, there are still so many there people are. using it and, and they cannot reach your website if you do but not allow I, 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 I agree, they can't, but uh, that was a guy, a web uh, standard advocate, so guy that really pushed some technology forward. He said that the guys that are still using Windows XP, they are used. That stuff doesn't work. Um, and they, yeah, at some point you need to make this decision to give them the, the final push. Yeah. Yes, a, as long as you still make the sites available, they don't have a reason to change. Someone and needs to make the first step. It's not only that, eh? so you want to secure your website, and okay, uh, if you secure your website, uh, Windows XP stops working in the most of the parts, but who would spend time in creating websites which work in EA 6, 7, or 8? But because of every EA version, you need to do something else to make your website work. Every EA version does something else, so it's just spending too much time on something what's not working correctly anymore for many years already. The problem is if you if you make websites for a customer and this customer wants to be reached by the whole world, so it's important for him to to be visible. Yeah, but I tell those customers that I yeah. will never ever help them supporting those old yeah. browsers and uh, Windows versions. And it's their, their choice. Mm -hmm. But uh, look, look at the other way around. If you want support from Microsoft for Windows XP, you will pay a few millions yeah. a year to get support. And yes, yeah, some governments still do, but it's just throwing away money. But um, at least you can see which kind of uh, things are supported with your secure configuration and even if I okay, um, put it on the highest encryption method only XP and some Java version isn't supported still the most devices and browsers support uh, your website um, it even shows, shows you some, some details about the communication, yeah, about the protocol. And they check some vulnerabilities which are used by hackers. And so, for example, if, if Poodle still is activated on, on uh, the vulnerability on the SSL version 3, then you probably need to call your hoster or find a new one. Because your website just can be hacked because just this vulnerability. They can use your certificates and do other things. So, black and green are good. And if, you over, if your scan just shows some red dots, just contact your hosting provider and tell them. And they can fix it. Most of the time it's just updating an op OpenSSL library uh, changing some some uh, checkboxes to disable some cyber suites and then it's fixed. So that's about scanning the yeah, website. A side note on your specific problem. Um, I'm not sure how the, the the laws are here in Austria, but in Germany, um, you as the one who's running the website, uh, you have a legal responsibility. To, um, to use a system that is up to date from a technical perspective. And if you don't do this, um, you get legal problems, you, you're violating privacy laws and these kind of things. Um, so I think the, the decision to support Windows XP from this perspective would, at least in Germany, be illegal. Still be but that's not only in Germany, it's in the whole Europe. Okay. But it's it's a new European uh, privacy law mm -hmm. since January January first, and uh, which becomes effective in two years. No, in not it's most countries. in the Netherlands, in Germany, it will become effective in two years. Yeah. Two but even the old the old privacy law is stating that uh, your websites need to be secured 
and non, there must be non possibilities to even get any data. So supporting XP is just telling you can get my data. In so Germany, this is a Verkehrssicherungspflicht. It's the same law that also applies to uh, get the snow away of the sidewalk. If you own this thing, you have to make sure that your visitors are secured. Yeah. So for the people who want to know, um, HP, just a few technical layers, and within it, with HPS, uh, between these layers, between the application and the transport layer, the secure part is push. So it's it really about the communication part. So the information what goes over the internet that is that is secured. You are not talking about the security on your server, the data stored in your database. It's just about the communication. So, I am familiar with ICP manager, I, I, ISP. Yeah. You are familiar with this? Sure. ISP manager. No, I don't. I, I don't know ISP manager. Uh, like C panel. Okay. okay. Yeah. You are not familiar with this. No. Okay. Because they provide this option to have HTTPS, CSL, uh, security stuff. Yeah, just the biggest question on that part is: Do they? Give you the ability to request a let's encrypt certificate, or do you need to go to a, a website to buy one? Yeah. Oh. If they support, I, I've, I've not tried it yet. I, I would like, so we will see. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. um, there is another question. I have another one. Um, I heard about some big companies who break up this secure communication, so from inside to outside, because they want to see what what kind of data crosses their boundaries and, and how do they do this? Do they exchange the certificate? Do they really... There's a, a virus scanner as well that they... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can, can you explain it in, in, in normal yeah. words, David? Or and I, 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 think, I think I go I too technical to explain it in... It, Flexible would be good, so yeah, both, it, both yeah, Actually, it's, it, it's quite simple. Um, if, uh, if you work at a large company that does this stuff, they installed your computer. And while doing so, they add their own master certificate that yeah. is trusted on this machine. Yeah. And um, when your computer then starts doing outgoing connections, they'll uh, have a server in the middle that uses this master certificate, um, unencrypt, unencrypts the, the connection, uh, scans it and encrypts it on the other side and then it goes away. It's, it's about having a special master certificate. That's the key thing. And the problem is um, that uh, from time to time those master certificates get leaked or even worse. Yeah. There was a, a, a few days, a few weeks ago, a um, large uh, certificate authority who had one of those uh, master certificates for internal testing purposes or something like this and it kind of went away um, and they realized it because there were people creating uh, manipulated Google certificates that would have been in the process and that's when, when the whole thing explodes. Yeah. So when you are talking about the communication from your workspace yeah. at the company you work, so this is not something it's easily possible from your own computer at home. No, I'm not talking about such kind of, of uh, VPN. I'm talking about sitting in, in the company yeah. and just doing, for example, internet banking. Yeah. So they have my login data on their, their server, if, if I do this. Yeah. Yeah, sure they have. And is this easy? Yes, it, it, depend, it, it, it depends on what you have If, if, um, if, at least, again, Germany, <coughs> you, if you as an employer, <coughs> Tell people, tell your employees that they're not allowed to do any personal Probably. stuff. Um, you can do pretty much everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it also applies to, to mailboxes. As soon as yeah, you yeah. disallow people to do private mailing, you're allowed to read their emails. No. <laughs> but they are not allowed to save all the information and what goes on the network. 
The, the only thing that helps in this scenario is something that at least a few major sites do, um, and also some major apps, they work with uh, a system called certificate pinning. Yeah. Um, that's, for example, the, the, I don't know, Google Chrome as a browser um, has uh, the hard coded serial number of the official Google.com certificate. So if your employee steps in and switch the certificate, Chrome would realize this and yeah. tell you even that e this is a trusted certificate, but somebody is trying to fool you. And this is certificate pinning, um, but this only works with a small amount of sites. And um, I'm not sure if there's the solution for, for general certificate pinning on the horizon, not yet, right? No, not yet. Yeah, but the result would be that this uh, website wouldn't work from within yeah. such a code. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you very much. It was great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good job. I think uh, Stephen has a message for 12 o'clock. You already forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 12 o'clock we need to meet in the biggest uh, room. Because of them. Yeah. 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 Thank you, everybody, please. Yeah.